In this video, I'm going to look at how you can add elevation to a line layer or indeed another kind of vector layer in QGIS. On my screen, I have some terrain data for Great Britain. And I'm going to zoom into the Highlands of Scotland and then I'm going to draw a line on the map canvas. I don't need this line to be a permanent layer, so I can click this button, which is going to create a temporary so-called scratch layer. And I'll just call this one line. The geometry type here will be line string. For the coordinate reference system, I'm going to set it so that it matches the project coordinate reference system so that my terrain layer that we can see in black and white and my line layer will have the same coordinate reference system. I'm not going to add any new columns to this table at the moment because there's no need. So I'm just going to click OK. And then editing will be turned on so I can go to add a line feature. I'm going to add a very simple line. So using the digitize with segment tool, I'll just click one point where I want to start the line from, another click where I want to end the line, and all I need to do to complete this line is just do a right click. And if I change the color of that line and the thickness, you'll be able to see the line I've drawn. Now, what I'd like to do is I'd like to take a sort of transect of the terrain and for every single point along this line, I'd like to know the elevation or in GIS talk, the Z or Z coordinate. So the height above sea level based on the land data. There's a number of different ways you could do this. There's loads of different ways you could probably do this in different tools. But what I'll do here is I'll click on the processing toolbox button. And what I'm going to do first of all, is I'm going to add some points along this line. Let me just click toggle editing to turn editing off and hit save. So this line is a temporary layer. When I close down this project, it will disappear, but that's fine. First of all, I'm going to type in points. And then I see this tool that I've recently used called points along geometry. So points along geometry is there. I'll double click it. And along the line layer, which is my input layer, I'm going to add a point every 100 meters. And then I'll get the elevation every 100 meters. You could do it every one meter, every 10 meters. My data set only has a resolution of 50 meters, but it doesn't really matter here. The point is you can use any number you like here. The more points you want, the smaller the number you put in. So if I put in 10 meters, there'd be a point every 10 meters. So that's fine. And the last box here is where I could click this button to save this to any file type or a geo package. I don't need to save it though. I'm just going to hit run and then close. So what we've got here, if I zoom in, is we can see points along the line. So there's the line and that tool created points along the line. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to sample the raster values. So in the processing toolbox, I'll type in sample and you see the tool called sample, sample raster values. It samples raster values under a set of points. So for each point, it's going to tell me the elevation at that point in the underlying terrain layer. So the input layer here will be the points. The raster layer is the terrain layer. And then the actual new column it's going to create by default will be called sample underscore. Well, let's just call it E L E V M. So that's just me writing that for elevation in meters. And I don't need to save this to a new layer here. I could do, but I'm going to export it as a CSV in a minute anyway. So let's just hit run and close. So now in the sampled section, in the sampled layer. If I open the table for this, what we have is one called distance. So as you can see, there's a point every hundred meters. The angle, that's just the direction, if you like, of the line. It's almost going directly south, which would be 180 degrees. So I drew it from north to south. That's why the angle says 185.77. 
because that was the angle of the vertex based on the line. But the key thing here is the elevation data. So that's our effectively our z-coordinate. Before I export this though, I do want to add an x-coordinate and a y-coordinate to the table. So a column for x and a column for y. And this will be an x-coordinate and a y-coordinate in British National Grid, which will be in meters. So to do that, it's very simple. I can click this tool to open the field calculator, which is me creating a new column. So we'll call the first one x, and it's going to be a whole number in this case. If you wanted to use decimal degrees, if you're using something like a coordinate reference system that has decimal degrees, you could use decimal number real. I'm using British National Grid and Meter, so I'll just choose whole number. And I'll just type in dollar sign $x. And then you see a preview at the bottom that's going to give me the X coordinate of the point. So I'll just click OK. There we go. And I'll do the same for Y. Dollar sign Y. And that's going to give me my Y coordinate, so my latitude. OK. And then I'll stop editing this and hit save. So this layer here is points every 100 meters along my original line. The elevation is recorded in this column and the X and Y coordinate is in this column. These are temporary layers which we can see indicated by the little microchip icon. If I then wanted to save this sampled layer here, I could choose any format I like and save it on my computer. But all I'm really wanted to do here is right click and export this layer and save it as a CSV file. And then I'll open it in Excel. Okay, I've exported this file, so let me just open it on screen. Okay, so here we have that file I created with the elevation along the line. If I click on the elevation column and I wanted to make a chart out of it, I could go to insert and then like that. And that gives me a very, very simple transect of the elevation along the line I drew originally. So let me close Excel. Back to QGIS and just remember the tools I used there were points along geometry and sample raster values and hopefully you might be able to find that useful in your own work.